So in this session, the learning objectives are to understand the role of the his groups in supporting implementations in countries, to understand the organizational structures of the HISP network and the relationship between UIO, University of Oslo, and the, and the groups, and then also uh, how to get support for country implementations. So we first start with a little bit of background and describe what the HISP groups are. So today there are 18 groups across Africa, Asia, Latin America, and here at the University of Oslo. These are DHS2 expert groups that provide long-term and locally adapted support to countries, as well as collaborate globally on capacity building and innovation. Many of the his groups are led by former UIO PhD students and have strong linkages to local universities. You can read uh, much more detail about the HISP network on our website, the link is here. And then on the right, you can see all the HISP groups uh, listed. So many people ask how DHS has scaled successfully in so many countries. And here are four good reasons for that. And all of them would have been impossible to achieve without his groups based in the countries and the regions where DHS is being used. These guys in the photo are some of the many that have been part of this journey and are part of a big HISP family. Aluka in the red t-shirt has spent 20 years now on his life mission to support the national HMIS and DHS2 in Nigeria. So what are the four ingredients that make up the secret HISP sauce recipe? Number one is capacity building. Regional and in-country capacity building is the most important activity for HISP. Having strong regional and in-country capacity is critical to achieve sustainability. The second is to provide long-term support. HISP is not a project, it's a program. The HISP groups are long-term and trusted partners to the Ministry of Health. Number three, closeness to the field and the user is critical when designing systems. And it's through the HISP groups in countries, working with the users over time, that we achieve this with the DHS2 platform development and in adapting DHS2 at the country level. Number four, global sharing of local solutions. Perhaps what makes HISP different from most other organizations and initiatives in this space is the focus on sharing. We strive for complete openness, not only in the software, but in all our work, and to learn from each other and thrive as a collaborative network. It has taken time to convince partners and investors that the HISP group approach is the right one. But it is now endorsed and funded by global partners like the Global Fund, Gavi, UNICEF, NORAD, and CDC. And having all these partners aligned around the same approach also enables us to help coordinate and align investments at the country level. All the HISP groups in the network share a set of core values related to open source, local ownership, sustainability, integration, and data use. And the full list of uh, this principle you can read uh, on our website. And each his group sign an MOU uh, where these values are listed and uh, the idea to follow these principles. So let's look uh, in a bit more detail on uh, what the core activities of the his groups are. We can broadly categorize them in four categories country support, regional capacity building research activities, and global product development. So in terms of country support, perhaps the most important activity of his groups is to strengthen DHS2 capacity in the governments that use DHS2. Most typically that is the Ministry of Health, but also increasingly, increasingly now, the Ministry of Education. This is happening to DHS trainings and guidance. His groups also provide expert level support on the DHIS configuration and maintenance. They also offer guidance on the overall uh, health information system architecture and work on interoperability solutions between DHIS2 and other systems in the country. His groups also develop custom DHIS2 applications to adapt to specific country needs. Uh, they also engage in uh, broader HI strengthening activities, work on assessments, and help uh, governments plan and budget for HI strengthening activities. 
Then in terms of regional capacity building, uh, the most important activity is that they help to run the DHS2 Academy program in each region. That means organizing and facilitating regional training events for countries that are in the same region, either share the same geography or share the same language. These groups also work together with University of Oslo to co-develop the global curriculum for the DHS2 Academy program. In addition to these more fixed training events, these groups also work at the regional level with regional entities and networks, such as the WHO regional offices in Afro and PAO in Latin America. They also work with uh, more political groups like the Western Africa Health Organization, part of ECOWAS, and the Asian eHealth Information Network. In terms of research activities, the HISP groups collaborate with the HISPIO research team on action research related to specific DHS2 implementations and pilot projects. That means engaging in the field solving problems together with the countries, and, and through that, learn what works and take part in the HISP action research program. Research can also include more deep dives, for example, around uh, understanding local data use. Recent initiative has been to establish uh, districts of excellence in, in several countries where the HISPs work together with the local users at the district level to fine-tune the HIS, understand needs for data use, and then tailor the HIS analytical tools to these uh, processes. The research activity is also important when it comes to understanding new domains to solve new challenges, document requirements, and then feed this into the global product, such as software development, implementation guidance, and training. These groups also take part in assessments and evaluations with the regional or country implementations. There's a strong link between the HISP groups and local universities that can take shape of internship programs at the HISP group or HISP group staff teaching at the local universities. And many of the HISP group staff are either enrolled in the PhD program here at UIO or have formally taken their PhD degree here. You can read much more about the research program on our website. So I mentioned earlier how important it is to be close to the field and the user when designing systems. And the HIS groups support the global DHS2 product development in many aspects. They act as representatives of ministries of health in the DHS2 software development process, and then represent kind of the main source for requirements in our roadmap and prioritization process. HISP groups also play a crucial role in facilitating field testing and validation of new functionality uh, with critical feedback loops back to the global teams, such as the software developers. HISP groups also innovate and develop custom solutions together with the users to solve specific problems quickly. And when relevant, these local innovations are later fed into generic global products and made available to all countries. His groups also participate in global teams more directly, helping us to develop implementation toolkits, such as implementation guidance and the metadata packages. They also get involved in developing training materials together with the global team and also engage on app development in collaboration with the global software developers. So finally, let's look at how the HISP network is organized. HISP is not a global corporate organization. It's a collaborative network of many independent organizations that share the same vision and values and form both formal and informal partnerships across the network. To simplify, we can say that HISP operates at three levels. The local single country level, each country should have a HISP group either in the country or nearby in the region that can provide long-term support in the local language and has a good understanding of the local context. Each has to support the countries, as we have discussed, is mainly provided by individual HISP groups at, at this level. Then at the regional multi-country level, although we encourage HISP collaboration across all the groups, there are good reasons to form uh, regional collaborations in each of the regions to coordinate capacity building and country support. HISP recently established a new coordinating mechanism at the regional level to more effectively coordinate regional activities. And this was called the regional HISP hubs. We'll talk more about this later. At the global level, although, as we have discussed, most HISP groups actively participate in global and generic work, activities are mainly coordinated by the HISP Center at the University of Oslo. 
most global investments to DHS2 and HISP network come through the UIO. And a substantial part of this is subcontracted to the HISP hubs and the groups to engage in the global network. At the HISP group level, we talked about HISP groups providing direct support to countries. The geographic area of responsibility varies a bit from his group to his group, but the, the kind of minimum is that they support the country where they are based. Then typically, most of the groups also support nearby countries in the region. A region can be geographic, neighboring countries, but could also be according to language. So for example, we have one his group based in Mozambique, supporting Portuguese-speaking countries, the Lusophone Africa, and these are spread geographically across Africa. And then we have another group supporting Spanish-speaking countries. Other countries outside of the immediate region are sometimes also supported if the HISP groups have some specialized expertise. For example, in the new domain of education, there are certain groups that have done this in-country and are now supporting other countries outside the region as they have gained this special expertise. So ideally, each country using DHS2 should have one his group that is near, nearby. We are, of course, continuously strengthening the network uh, of his groups and try to respond to new demand. There are new regions emerging with DHS demands, and we are trying to actively set up new his groups or find other support options for these regions. And that includes Latin America and the Caribbean, the MENA M region, and Eastern Europe, Central Asia. We recommend that countries and organizations contact his groups directly for support for implementations in a single country. And you can find the listing of all the groups on our website. Then at the regional level, we talked about the HISP hubs as a coordinating body representing all his groups in a region to better coordinate regional DHS2 activities. We have so far established three different HISP hubs, one to support the Southern Eastern Africa region, and this uh, is hosted by HISP Uganda. And then we have another one in Western Central Africa, hosted by HISP WCA, based in Togo. And then uh, a third hub for HISP Asia, hosted by HISP India. The HISP hubs are hosted by mature HISP groups with strong organizational and financial capacity in order to take on multi-country grants from global investors and organizations. Some key responsibilities for the HISP hubs include organizing and coordinating regional capacity building as the DHS2 Academy program, also coordinate support to countries across the region, and they foster experience sharing and skill development between HISP groups in the same region. More formally, the HISP hubs also manage regional country support grants from the Global Fund. And to contact the HISP hub for multi-country support, you can email the HISP group responsible for hosting that specific hub. Those were listed on the previous slide. Then at the global level, we have the HISP Center at the University of Oslo leading global platform development, leading the work of developing generic implementation toolkits uh, and guidance, as well as training materials. The HISP Center also facilitates collaboration and sharing in the HISP network, and we coordinate global and multi-country work in collaboration with the HISP hubs. We also coordinate HISP research activities and run a PhD program and master programs, both here at the University of Oslo and in collaboration with other universities across the world. You can contact the HISP Center if you have a global project inquiries at post at dhs2.org. So the recent COVID pandemic is a great example of the HISP work in action and shows how critical it is to have existing systems and capacity in place when new solutions are needed quickly. The map here, you can see all the countries that adopted the DHS2 platform for COVID-19 surveillance, 47 in total, and another 42 for the COVID vaccine delivery. So, this started with local innovation by his groups at the country level. His groups rapidly responded to the pandemic with local customizations of the DHS2 platform in collaboration with country governments. This started as early as January 2020 in Sri Lanka. Then these local innovations from the first countries were shared to other his groups and the global teams through webinars, Slack channel discussions, and informal communication. Then the UIO global teams 
learned from these early countries and expanded the WHO DHS2 surveillance and immunization toolkits to also support COVID-19 requirements. The toolkits contain standard metadata that can be installed in the national DHS2 instance, system design guides, installation guides, and end user training material and training databases. And this then enabled many countries to take advantage of these early innovations. Then his groups train, uh, were trained on the new solutions and the new toolkits, and also set up um, processes to share experiences across the groups, and had set up rapid communication back to the global teams to improve glo global solutions. There were a lot of rapid cycles of improvements coming you know, with feedback from countries through the his groups up to the global teams that worked on the toolkits and the software improvement. Then in each country, his group supported capacity building of national core teams to implement the toolkits and customize according to local context. This was provided by his groups through either on-site or virtual trainings and guidance. And sometimes global team also supported with technical backstopping. Then within the country at subnational and local level, the HS was further customized and configured to support local workflows or service delivery and delivery providers and data managers on the front line. So this was cascaded and decentralized in terms of data collection and analysis to subnational levels for local action. So to summarize, the HISP network provides DHS2 expertise to support sustainable information systems. The HISP network is united by common values and supported by global partners. His groups offer local country-focused support and are long-term Ministry of Health partners. His pubs coordinate regional support and capacity building. And at uh, the HISP Center at the University of Oslo, we coordinate the HISP network and lead multi-regional and global projects. 